Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter in Salute to the Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The personal philosophy of the average Marine is set down for posterity in the last verse of the Marine hymn, which says, If the Army and the Navy ever look on heaven's scenes, they will find the streets are guarded by United States Marines. This week, the nation marks the 168th anniversary of the Marine Corps, and we add our part to the celebration by presenting Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter in their Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer hit, Salute to the Marines. At Midway, at Wake Island, and at Guadalcanal, this service has written its record in fire and blood. But tonight's play is not that story. It's the personal drama of a sergeant major and his family, a veteran who retired to peace and quiet, and in typical Marine style, found he'd picked the hottest spot in the world. A fortunate break enabled us to reunite two of Hollywood's busiest stars. Faye Bainter has just returned to town from a camp tour after making Cry Havoc at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. And Wally Beery has just finished the picture rationing at the same studio. You know, in recent months, many of us have learned not to take even the simplest things of life for granted. We think twice before we throw things away. Housewives combine uh, accounting with cookery. Old newspapers and waste fats suddenly turn out to be valuable raw materials. And a simple necessity, like a cake of soap, is something to be handled with care and respect, especially if it's Lux toilet soap. Of course, uh, a famous beauty of a few thousand years ago, like Cleopatra, would see nothing unusual in this at all. Beauty at that time was something to be preserved the hard way. And the possession of even one cake of Lux toilet soap would probably have called for building a pyramid to keep it safe. And now for a little history in the making. And the first act of Salute to the Marines, starring Wallace Beery as Bill Bailey and Faye Bainter as Jenny, with Noah Beery as the Colonel and Key Luke as Flashy. Tripoli, Hong Kong, New Orleans, Peking, Manila, Bella Wood, Chateau Thierry. These are but a few of their hallowed battlegrounds, for they've fought and died in every corner of the world. We are proud to salute the United States Marines. Long before Pearl Harbor, the United States Marines were on regular duty in the Philippine Islands. In 1940, three battalions were stationed on the outskirts of Cavite. There, these leathernecks were drilled and trained by the toughest and roughest leatherneck of them all, Sergeant Major William Bailey. His superior officers called him Old Bill. Some of the men called him that old uh, so-and-so. But on one thing, they were agreed. Bill Bailey was all Marine, every inch of him. Company, halt! Order! Arms! At ease! Well, men... I want to congratulate you. We've been three days on maneuvers, and I want to say that you men are in a class by yourselves. Yes, sir, I've been in the Marine Corps 29 years. I've trained thousands of boots. But you're the dirtiest, mangiest, swayback mob I ever saw. I'll give you just 30 minutes to police yourselves into something that looks human and stand inspection. Attention! Dismiss. Hey, that's pretty tough going, Bill. 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't scrape that mud off of themselves in 30 years. They're rounding into pretty good shape, ain't they? Yeah, they're doing fine. Hey, where's that barracks boy of mine? I got to do a little mud scraping myself. Hey, Flashy! Hey, Sergeant! Hello, boss. Gee whiz. Hiya, champ. Did you miss me? Sure. Three days you've been gone. Yeah. <laughs> hey, turn the hose on this helmet, will you? Sure, Sergeant. I fix it up all nice and clean. Had a boy. You been training like what I said? Sure. I do road work every day. Then I punch the bag. Fifteen rounds. But I could go forty easy. That's fine. But you don't want to overdo it. You'll grow stale. 
It won't be long now, huh, Sergeant? I got to be in shape. Oh, sure. Top shape. Gee, I can hardly believe you being my manager, helping me win back my title. It's in the bag, kid. One fight in Frisco. Just a warm-up. Then a couple of more bouts at Hollywood Legion. Then Madison Square Garden and the announcer hold up my hand. Winner and again world champion, Flashy Logas. Sure, that's it. Sergeant, it ain't true that they don't come back, is it? I can do it, can't I? Sure you can, sure you can. Only take it easy, that's all. Sergeant Bailey. Yeah, what do you want, orderly? The colonel wants to see you at headquarters. The colonel will, uh, <laughs> I got time to change these clothes. The colonel said right away. Look, was the old, I mean the, uh, I mean the colonel, was he mad or anything, huh? Uh, what's the matter, Bailey? You got a guilty conscience? Why should I have a guilty conscience? Tell me why. Now, look, chum, all I know is three more times in that brig, and they're going to name it after you. Orderly, you can go. Sergeant Major Bailey, sir. Come in, Sergeant. The colonel sent for me, sir? Yes, I did. I'm I'm sorry I didn't have time to change, sir. I just brought the battalion in from the back country. Mm -hmm. Looks like you brought most of the back country with you. Well, the orderly said to come as is, sir. I suppose if the orderly had found you taking a bath, you'd have come that way, too. Yes, sir, if it was the colonel's order, sir. Well, never mind. Well, Sergeant, this gentleman is Mr. Agno on the staff of the Secretary of War of the Philippine government. How do you do, Sergeant? Fine, thank you, sir. But Mr. Agno's government is undertaking a pretty big job. Needs a lot of help. I thought of you at once, Bailey. That's very kind of you, sir. Any little thing that I can do for you at any time, sir? I... It's quite a big thing, Sergeant. And the time is now. Yes, sir. Well, Bailey, I suppose you know the Philippines will become completely independent in 1945. Yes, sir. I had heard something about that, sir. Independence is something that must be preserved. After it is won, it must be defended. We are preparing for the day when we must defend mm. ours, when there will be no more United States Marines in the Philippines. Oh, you... you mean the Japs, sir? Mr. Agnew is speaking theoretically, Sergeant. We're not at war with Japan. No, no, no. Pardon, pardon me, sir. I, I got you. I got you. No names, sir. Bailey, I have an order to detach a certain number of officers and men to this training duty. I'm sending you up to the Zubig province to take charge of civilian training in that area. What? Me train civilians? Why, I would... Just a moment, Sergeant. Oh, Mr. Agno, don't hesitate to call on me if I can be of further service to you. Thank you. Good day, Colonel. Good day, sir. Good day, Sergeant. Pleased to meet you, sir. Well, get it off your chest, Bailey. I didn't want you sounding off in front of an official of the Philippine government. Is that training civilian stuff on the level, sir? Yes, it's on the level. But I've got a job. I'm just not getting that 1st Battalion whipped into shape so it'll look like something. Sergeant McCarty will take over. McCarty? Oh, that bog-trotting donkey? Why, he's just a recruit. He's only been in this service ten years. <laughs> Besides, then there's Filipinos. They're, they're too little to make good fighting men. When God made the Filipino... He gave him so much heart that, well, he had to skimp a little on the size of his body. Be ready to shove off for the Zubig province the first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Oh, sir, I... I hear talk that the 1st Battalion is going to be ordered to China to relieve the legation guard, sir. Possibly. Sir, I've never asked a favor of my commanding officer yet. But if that 1st Battalion goes into active service, I've got to go with them. For 30 years, I've stood on that dock watching somebody else take the men into action that I've trained. What did I get out of it? Nothing but fallen arches to fish peddler's voice. It's humiliating, sir. 30 years in the service and not a single battle honor on my record to look at in my old age. The colonel knows that I come up for retirement in a couple of months, and I don't want to be stuck way up there in Zubig Province with things cracking wide open over there in Asia? Yeah, I'll give you my word. If I'm ordered to Asia, you go with me. Oh, thank you, sir. That, that's good enough for me, sir. And by the way, you'll probably be seeing your wife and daughter up at Zubig. Oh, yeah, yeah, my wife. Give Mrs. Billy my best regards, will you? Yeah, yeah, yes, I will, sir. She's living near there, isn't she? Yeah, she certainly is, sir. Oh. Well, what's the matter, Billy? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing, sir. All right, that's all, Bailey. Let me know what men you want to take with you. All right, sir. You let me know, sir, about going with you on active duty, sir. The day I get my orders. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. Hold it, you guys. Hold it. Here, here, here. You know, heaven might have made you Filipino boys small, but they certainly made you loud. Oh, oh, yeah, my funny. Now, listen. Listen. This here thing is a bayonet. When I say fix bayonets, you take it out and you... Oh, what's the matter? Hey, Flashy, come here. Yeah, boss? What are those guys babbling about? They no like bayonets. They don't? Well, I don't blame them for that. Takes a lot of nerve to handle that steel. Oh, they think bayonets baby stuff. Baby stuff? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now listen, you guys. Get this straight now. This bayonet is the wickedest weapon that was ever invented. Now you watch that dummy. Here is the parry and the long thrust. <clears throat> you get it? Now just when the other fellow thinks he's got you, you smack him with the butt end of that piece. You see? <laughs> Flashy. What are they laughing at? They think you're very funny, boss. Funny? Well, you tell them I didn't get these stripes on my arms from being a comedian. Quiet! 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 This is a serious business. Now, like I was saying before, the bayonet is the wickedest weapon that was ever... Excuse me, sir. Much better our way. What? Much more good to use bolo. Bolo? What's... Uh, Listen, son, we ain't got no time to play around with games. Bulo is no game. Bulo is knife, see? A knife? Oh, well, you put it away before you stick your finger with it. Go on. Excuse me, sir. You stick bayonet and dummy. Leave just a little hole, no? We make one swing. Cut him up in half. Oh, go on. You watch. Mmm. Well, doggone it. See? No more dummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, wait a minute, wait a minute here. You can't do that. Why, sir? War is to kill the enemy, no? Why, we can't do it. Because, well, well, it ain't regulations. That's why. Let me look at that thing. Hey, Flash, you set up another dummy. I want to try out this bolo stuff. Sure, boss. Go ahead. Now, let's see. <clears throat> hey, that, that ain't bad, is it? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Maybe we can stretch the regulations just a little and use the bayonet and the bolo together, huh? All right, now, quiet. Quiet! Boy, I feel like I've been put through a washing machine. Mosley, you take over that second platoon tomorrow. I'll teach those guys close order drill or I'll spend the rest of my life in a padded cell. Yeah, we'll get one with twin beds. You'll assist to have company. Come and get it, boys. What's going on out there? Thanks, he just got back with the mail. Let me at it. Let me at it. Baker, Callahan, hey, 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 give me that. Give me that. Where you been? You've had enough time to go down to the United States and bring that mail back. What'd you do? Stop on the road? Wouldn't you like to know? Hey, gang, the 1st Battalion shoving off for China. Wait a minute, wait. Are you kidding, Hank? I saw him back in the sea bags. He even said goodbye to a bunch of guys I know. There's a transport standard by in Kaviti with steam up. Is that kidding? It's a good thing you went after the mail. I might have missed the whole show. Anderson, something must have happened to my orders. Hey, Flashy. Here, boss. Get a hold of a truck. Go on, hurry. You and me is heading for Manila. So long, boys. This is what I've been waiting for. I'll send you guys a postal card from Shanghai. Yes, sir, and I, I left Anderson in charge, sir. A very good man, Colonel. The minute I heard that news that we were shoving off, why, I hightailed it right back here because I figured that something had happened to my orders, of course, sir. Yes, yes, uh, uh, I promise that if I went, you'd go with me. Yes, sir. Them was your very words, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sit down, Billy. Sit down? Is the colonel feeling well? Oh, never felt better in my life. Well, I thought maybe the old fever was coming back on you. Well, sit down, sit down. A man can relax a little, can't he? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, smoke, Bailey? Smoke? Yes, uh, have a cigar. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess I will. Thank you, sir. Well, how's the training coming, Bailey? Oh, just as smooth as silk, sir. You were right. Them little Filipinas are making great fighters. Hmm. Uh, did you see Mrs. Bailey while you were up there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw her once or twice. Was that all? Well, tell you, Colonel. 
You know, Jenny never forgave me for signing up for that last hitch. Then she moved up there to Balligan to billet with the rest of them pacifist screwballs, and, well, since then, you know, we ain't been getting along so good. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You see, Colonel, Jenny's all hepped over this brotherly love stuff. She and her friends figure out that they can save the world by turning the other cheek. But Helen... Well, Helen is different, you know. Well, the last time I saw Helen, she was quite a young lady. Yes, sir, she sure is. Why, Helen, she... Excuse me, sir. Well, what's the matter? Well, here I am just sitting here gassing and... Well, that's all right. Yes, sir, but I expected to find the colonel right up to his neck and work and blowing off steam, getting ready to go aboard that transport, sir. I'm not going aboard the transport, and neither are you. <sighs> you kind of had me scared until I... Realize that he was only joking, sir. No joke. Lieutenant Colonel Barnes is taking the battalion. Barnes? Why, he's only a kid. Well, I've been told that fighting is a kid's business this day and age. The next war, if there is one, will be for young men, Sergeant. You can't let him do that to me. Not again, sir. Why, it's the last chance that I'll ever have to get that decoration, sir. Sergeant, anybody can lead trained men into battle, but training men to be led. That's something else again. Sir, I'm going with that 1st Battalion if I have to go over the hills and stow aboard that transport. No, you're not. You're staying right here in the Philippines and carrying out your orders like a good Marine. I knew there was something wrong the minute you gave me that stogie. I've been had by a two-bit cheroot. A young man's war. Why, I can lick any man that you've got in the regiment. I've forgotten more than any man on that transport will ever know. Sergeant, tomorrow we begin training another battalion. That all, sir? That's all. All right, sir. Oh, uh, Bill. Yes. Will it make it any easier if you remember I'm not going either? Yeah, but with you, it's different, sir. You, you've got your battle honors, and I... Is that all, sir? I'm sorry, Bill. Yes, sir. So am I, sir. <laughs> oh, go on. I'll be leaving in the morning. Here I am, still sitting and waiting. Waiting for what? Come on home, boss. Come on back to the barracks. Go on away. I don't care. My hitch is up tomorrow, too. 30 years. Let him go. Let him go on without me. Oh, I don't... Relax, relax, old timer. Huh? Here, take it easy. Have a cigar. Cigar? Why, you low down? No trouble, please. No trouble, Sergeant. What's the matter, old timer? Shut that old timer stuff down the smokestack, sailor. I'll bust you wide open. No, I won't. You're right. Old timer, that's me. You got me. Old timer. Why, there was Marines with John Paul Jones. There was Marines in 1812 on the Constitution. I'm an merchant Marine myself. That's okay. Don't apologize. I guess you're all right. There was Marines with Decatur at Tripoli. It was the Marines that broke the Kaiser's back. Every battlefield all over the world has been crawling with Marines. And me, Bill Bailey... I ain't never been nowhere, Bill Bailey. I'm the only non-combatant Marine in the history of the Marine Corps. Uh, that's tough luck. I always said the Marines was a crummy outfit. What? What? No. Please, no trouble, Sergeant. I ain't gonna let any seagone civilian insult the U.S. Marine. Why, you sap, I only said what you were saying. Oh! So you was listening in on my private conversation, huh? Now, listen, hotshot. Don't you say anything about the merchant marines either, sir. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, I gotta sock him. Boss! Why, you... Sergeant, no trouble! No trouble! No trouble? This is a pleasure. Let me hit him. Come on. Come on, hey, somebody. Wake up and let us out of here. Sit down, boss. Sit down and rest. Yeah, they're going to let us rot in this place. It's not so bad. Pretty good jail. Oh, yeah. Fine. Too bad we got licked, no? What do you mean, we got licked? We were surrounded. 
Wait a minute. Here comes somebody. We get out of here in no time. Well, no, we won't. It's an MP. Peekaboo, handsome. Oh, uh, don't try and be funny. What am I charged with? Oh, practically nothing. Destruction of civilian property, drunken disorderly, resisting a patrol, assault and battery upon members of a brother's service, to wit, 12 merchant sailors. It was 13 sailors. A nice little riot you started. At your rage, too. Why, you web-footed gold brick. Go on, lamb out of here. Who sent for you anyway? Oh, uh, you got a couple of visitors outside. Visitors who? Jenny and Helen, your family, oh, remember? Oh, don't, don't let them come in here. Don't, 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 don't. Tell them I've been ordered to China. I you? can't stop them. They got a pass. Where is he? Uh, here you are, Mrs. Bailey. Make yourself right at home. Oh. William. William Bailey. Yes, ma'am. Father. Hello, Helen. Well, here we are again, huh? William, to think I have to visit you in the brig, like a criminal. Oh, it's only temporary, Mom. Mother, you talk as if Daddy'd done something terrible. The whole thing's probably a misunderstanding. Sure, it's just a disagreement between gentlemen. I can prove self-defense. Well, I'd rather have you here than in China. Bill, you don't know how we prayed. Oh, you haven't been praying against me again, have you? <laughs> Every minute. Since we heard the 1st Battalion had been ordered into active service. Oh, I didn't think that you'd do that to me. Pray me out of the last chance that I have to get that decoration. I might have known it. You started praying the very first day that you were married. You prayed me out of every chance that I've ever had for active service. And it ain't fair either, seeing as how I ain't been praying back at you. <laughs> Say, how did you know that that 1st Battalion was shoving off to China? Mr. Casper told me. He's our neighbor up at Balligan. Mm, yeah. How did he know it? It's a military secret. That don't make any difference. I'm getting out of the Marines. I'm taking my retirement pay. William, are you really? Well, I don't believe it. They couldn't pry you out of that uniform. Yeah, I don't suppose you believe it either, Mama. I want to believe you, but you've lied to me. you fooled me so many times. Well, I do mean it this time, honey. I'm getting out. And when I do... You ain't going to be married to the Marine Corps anymore. Oh, Bill, you don't know what this means. It's like starting all over again. But are you sure? Will they let you retire? Oh, probably after last night, they'll kick me out, Mom. No, they won't. I saw Colonel Mason. He said he hadn't heard you were in here. He doesn't even want to hear it. Yeah, well, what's the difference? I'm getting out anyway. <laughs> From the Secretary of the Navy to Sergeant Major William Bailey, United States Marine Corps. The Secretary of the Navy extends to Sergeant Major William Bailey congratulations upon his retirement at the expiration of 30 years continuous service in the Corps. Throughout his long service, Sergeant Major William Bailey has distinguished himself by his devotion to duty. His unblemished record is and should be an inspiration to all hands in the Naval Service of the United States. This letter of commendation is to be attached to and made part of the service record of Sergeant Major Bailey by order of the Secretary of the Navy. Pass and review. Pass and review. Crack. Hate. Forward. Cut. Well, Bill, we're going to miss you. Thank you, sir. There goes the old 2nd Battalion. I, I guess they're on their way, too, huh? That's right, Bill. Well, take care of yourself. Yeah, sure. So long, Bill. Oh, Dad, I'm so proud of you. Hello, Helen. Hello, Mom. Well, at last it's over. Come on, Bill. We are going home. Wait, I, I just want to see the, the fellas leave, huh? Bill, you are happy, aren't you? You wouldn't want to be going with them, would you? Me? No, that stuff's not for me anymore. Don't you know? This fighting business... That's for kids now. Me? <laughs> I'm just an old timer. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Wallace Beery and Fay Bainter in Act Two of Salute to the Marines. Candid quizzes are the rage these days. You know, you ask yourself questions about your own personality or appearance and rate yourself on the answers. Here's what we mean. I'm looking in the mirror. 
Do I like what I see? First, my hair. Nice and smooth. Becoming hairdo, too. I'll give myself a full ten points on that. Now for my complexion. Hmm, not bad. Not too good, either. Only five points on that, I guess. What's the score on the care you give it? Well, I've been thinking about that. I was going to try some real beauty care every night. Those Lux Soap Facial Screen Stars use. Instead of that lick and promise stuff? Well, usually it's late and I'm tired. Oh, I'll be honest with myself. Guess I rate about three for effort there. Look, you could raise that to ten, easy as pie. Of course I could. I will, too. Me for an active lather facial with Lux Soap every single night. Beginning now. And here's what she does. Smooth lots of the Lux Soap lather well in. My, but it's creamy. Feels wonderful on my skin. Rinse with warm water, splash on cold, and now a soft towel to pat skin dry. And it's only a few weeks later that she finds... Why, my skin really looks a lot fresher. Feels smoother, too. I think I'll give myself ten points for complexion now, thanks to my Lux Soap beauty care. Yes, it's true. Regular facials with Hollywood's beauty soap do make complexions lovelier. Lux Toilet Soap is gentle and mild, just right, to give delicate skin protecting care it needs. Try these Lux Soap beauty facials screen stars depend on. Let the rich active lather of this fine white soap work for you. Day by day, it will help your skin to become softer, smoother, lovelier to look at. Ask for Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. And if your dealer is out of stock due to wartime conditions, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty soap of the stars, is worth waiting for. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Two of Salute to the Marines, starring Wallace Beery as Bill Bailey and Faye Bainter as Jenny, with Noah Beery as the Colonel and Key Luke as Flashy. <laughs> Bill Bailey, ex-Marine, has retired to the pacifist settlement of Balagan in the Philippines. The neighbors have turned out in force to welcome him to their midst. On the porch of Jenny's bungalow, Mr. Caspar, pacifist number one of Balagan, is holding forth on his favorite subject. To be able to gather here freely and to speak freely. Every time we listen to the radio from Europe, we can thank our lucky stars that such things could never happen here in Balagan. <coughs> oh, but I'm afraid we've been neglecting our host. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I've been listening. I suppose as an ex-soldier, Mr... Marine. Ex-Marine, Doc. Oh, yes. As an ex-Marine. I suppose you don't share our views at all, do you? No, Doc, I guess I don't. Well, you see, Mr. Bailey, none of us in Balligan believe that soldiers are really necessary. Oh, nothing personal, of course. No, that's all right. I'm used to that. You know, a Marine is like a fireman. They never call for him till the house is on fire. Soldiers are the weapons of industrial overlords. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know nothing about that, Mr. Casper. But... Uh, Mr. Casper, my husband is no longer in the service. He's worn his last uniform, thank goodness. Haven't you, William? Yeah, yeah, I'm retired. So there's really nothing to discuss about it, is there? <laughs> well, good afternoon, Mrs. Bailey. I'll be running along. Oh, so soon, Doctor. It was nice of you to come so Bill could meet his new friend. I am sure you'll like Balligan, Mr. Bailey. We are simple, home-loving, peaceful people. Yeah, I can see that. You haven't met all of us yet, but we're all the same. Mr. Carrot, too, here runs our radio station. He's an electrical engineer, educated in the United States. Mm, is that so? Oh, yes, sir. I took my science degree at Cornell. Oh, you went to America and got smartened up. <laughs> Not bad for a foreigner. Oh, yes. I learned much. Americans are very smart. Good afternoon, Mrs. Berry. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Yeah, goodbye. goodbye. So long. Place is mine. Goodbye. Well, that's over. Now, didn't I tell you, Bill, aren't they lovely people? Yeah, well, maybe they're okay, but they ain't one of them could get by a good recruiting officer. What they need is some setting-up exercises, something to put a ramrod down their back. Bill, stop living in the past. You've got to learn to relax. And now that you're home, 
I'm going to show you how. You just leave everything to me. Sure. Here. You want to finish the rest of this hors d'oeuvre? Yeah, I guess I will. I ain't had nothing to eat yet. <clears throat> hey, Jenny. What's this your salty stuff you got spread all over the toast? Anchovy paste, dear. Oh. I thought it was some kind of fish. <laughs> Dear. Get to bed. You must be tired. Yeah, all that talking kind of got me down. Oh, Bill, it's so good to have you home. Yeah, it is nice, honey. A real home and real friends. I'm afraid I'll wake up and find out I've been dreaming. No, no, this is a real McCoy. Home is where a man belongs, ain't it, Helen? Well, some men. It is better than the barracks, isn't it? Sure, sure. I feel like a country gentleman. Still miss your old companions? Them lugs. If I never see any of them again, that'll be soon enough for me. You know, they was kind of a bad influence over me. Oh, Bill, you make me so happy. Oh, Jenny, honey. Oh, don't mind me. You dubs go right on with your billing and cooing. I'll wash the dishes. Night, Dad. Good night, Helen. Come on, now. I'll turn down your bed, and you can get a good night. William. Yes, ma'am. William, what are these things? Them? Why, that, well, that's a uniform, Jenny, a set of dress blues. What do you know? I found it under your mattress. You did? Well, I was kind of saved it for Halloween. <laughs> William, you lied to me. Oh, Jenny, now how can you say that? You told me you'd given away every last uniform, that you never wanted to see them again. You cheated. You hid this one. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I ain't no good. I ain't got no willpower, especially when it comes to thinking about some other lug wearing my dress blues. Oh, I fought and wrestled with temptation, but I lost. Maybe it's because I always kind of had a picture of myself being buried in my blues. I can see myself now laid out in my blues and all my medals on my chest. The idea. Why, it's almost sacrilegious. I'll get rid of these right away. No, no, wait. Wait a minute, Jenny. When assembly blows up yonder and the angel Gabriel calls a roll, he ain't never going to recognize Bill Bailey in civilian clothes. Maybe we shouldn't take a chance like that. I'll answer to the angel Gabriel. Good night. Anybody home? Oh, come in, Mr. Casper. Sit down. I can only stay a moment, Mrs. Bailey. I'm, well, frankly, I'm a little embarrassed. What is it? Has Bill done something wrong again? Well, according to the principles we live by, yes. Mrs. Bailey, he's down at the garage. He has all the children of the town there, and he and that Filipino boy he brought with him, they, well, they're teaching the children to fight. Okay, okay, that's enough, kids. That's enough now. Sit down and cool off. Gee, Flashy, I bet you were the greatest fighter in the world. Me, I was the world's champion. But Sergeant Bailey, he could be two world's champions if he was not so busy protecting the United States. Oh, no, Flashy, I wouldn't talk like that. Could you have been Sergeant Bailey? Well, you see, <clears throat> every time I got in a new bunch of boots for training, the first thing I did was to offer to lick any man in the outfit. I never did have no takers. Gee, Marines? Well, they was Marines by the time I got through with them, all right. Sergeant Bailey, tell us how you won that battle of Chateau Thierry single-handed. Oh, well, that, you know, that was, uh, that was mostly luck. <laughs> I don't like to talk about that. Oh, oh tell us, come, come on, on in. All right, okay, on, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. You know, the guns got so hot that we could light our cigarettes off of them. We ran out of ammunition, so I said, boys, follow me. We'll charge them with the bayonets. Gee, the whole German army? All that was left of them. Why, we charged so fast that we fought our way right straight through Berlin and had to retreat back five miles to capture. <laughs> Gee. Sure. Just before the battle started, the old general come up to me and he says... Bill Bailey? Oh, oh yes, kids. Uh, and there was David way up on the mountainside. <laughs> he was, you know, he was tending his little flock of sheep. It's all in the Bible. William. Oh, hello, Jenny. And there they were. Very good little sheep, too. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with the good book when I was in the Marines. Jimmy Carson, 
Where did you get that black eye? Frankie gave it to me. Yeah, I gave it to him. But I got one, too. See? Children, I, I think you'd all better go home. Oh, oh yes, I, I, I really mean it. Now, go along. Hurry up. Gag. Look, Jenny, they were still just... I'm ashamed of you. What do you suppose their mothers are going to say about this? Oh, I don't know. I just... Still, this is the end of my patience. All you've ever done since you came here is just stir up trouble. Oh, Mom, you know I wasn't doing nothing. Sneaking away with those boys, drilling them, trying to make Marines out of them. Well, I was just playing, that's all. I've told you time and again that people here don't like that kind of playing. They're bringing up their children to believe that war and fighting is wrong. You come along and undo all their good work. It's getting so half the village doesn't speak to me. I've heard 50 people say that you were a bad influence. Oh, I'm almost sorry I brought you to Bell again. Sometimes I think it might have been better if I'd left you in the Marine Corps. Maybe you're right, Jenny. Hey, Frankie, the fishing fleet's in! The fishing fleet! The fishing fleet's in! Hiya, Mr. Casper. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bailey. Pretty busy here today, huh? Like Saturday night, the small town. Yes, there's always a stir when the fishing boats come in. You know, people look forward to it. The fishermen spend a couple of days amusing themselves like children. Then they go back to sea again for weeks at a time. Yeah? Well, they don't look like children to me, Mr. Casper. They're uh, all Japs, aren't they? Yes, I've known them for years. Peace-loving, peace-abiding men with hearts of gold. And they've been very good to me. Yes, I can tell that. You do business with them, Mr. Casper? They bring me merchandise from Japan. They have a great sense of loyalty to their friends. Me? I don't like Japs, boss. That's all right, Flashy. I ain't too fond of them myself. Please. All my life, I've tried to destroy such prejudices. We must extend the hand of peace and friendship to all men. Accept them as brothers. Don't expect me to have any brotherly love for one of those Japs. Every time I see one, I get goose pimples between my shoulder blades. Hey, them ships out there look pretty rich for any fisherman's blood that I've ever seen. Steel hulls, high-compression diesels. Looks like something built for the Navy. Oh, oh, the boats belong to a syndicate which employs fishermen. They must be staunchly built in a great cruising range. Why, sometimes they're at sea for months at a time. Travel thousands of miles seeking the best fishing grounds. Fishing grounds, huh? Well, maybe you're right. Maybe. I just can't make myself realize it. Only 18 days until Christmas. <laughs> maybe I'd feel more Christmassy if I could see a field covered with snow. Why, Mother, this is going to be the best Christmas the Bailey family ever had. We'll be together. William, we'll be late for church. Now put down that newspaper, dear. I don't believe that that little bow-legged monkey, if he was standing on a stack of Bibles as high as the Washington Monument. Who? Oh, that there Japanese ambassador, Kurosu. No, Bill, it says peace right there in the paper. It must hurt them to print the truth for a change. Mr. Casper says most of the trouble in the world is stirred up by the newspapers. I don't care what Mr. Casper says. I don't believe Casper, and I don't believe this Curacao guy either. Hitler was fought in peace, too, when he went in there and blitzed Holland and Belgium, wasn't he? I think it's criminal to create bad feelings between the Japanese and ourselves when we've lived in friendship for years. Dad, the Japanese wouldn't fly an ambassador all the way to Washington to talk peace if they didn't mean it, would they? I don't know anything about that. But if I was still in the Marines, I'd have double watches setting all the men right on their battle stations. Well, you're not in the Marines, and you are on your way to church, you old calamity howler. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jenny, you got a dime for me to put in a box when I get there. Here you are, dear. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> has a particular significance to all of us who share in the common desire for peace and brotherhood. All men who fear war and rumors of war should hearken unto the voice of Isaiah, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more.
Japanese bombers. Bombers? Come on. Don't worry about me. I can walk. Take care of the others. Tell them I'm all right. Oh, give him to me. Let me hold him. No, please, Mrs. Carson, don't look. Please don't. What is it? It's little Jimmy Carson. He's dead. They killed him. They killed my baby. Here, give him to me. Let me carry him. I'll take him home. Oh, my baby, my baby. The whole town is burning. Sergeant. Come here, Flashy. We're in the church to get the injured out. Wait. Listen, boss. That Mr. Casper. He's making a speech. Casper? Where? Over here. All the people listening. We will place arms in your hands. Use them to drive the Americans who made you slaves into the sea. Hunt them down. Kill them. I tell you, the Japanese are your brothers. The Americans are your enemies. We cannot fail. Liberty is yours. I promise you freedom. Haven't I always been your friend? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You hear what he says? He's your friend? Well, he was this little boy's friend, too. This kid that I'm holding in my arms. He patted him on the head. Used to feed him candy. He sat at the same table with his mother and father. He ate their bread and butter. This is what happened to his friend. The same thing will happen to you. He calls himself Henry Casper. Ask him what his real name is. Henry Casper, I'm proud of it. Major in the army of that Führer. Your name is Rat. You came here with a flag of the United States wrapped around you, protected by the laws and the rights of the Americans. All the time you were just a dirty, crawling, filthy bilge rat, squealing about peace, brotherhood of man. Listen, folks. He says you're not Americans. I say that you are. You might not have been born in Peoria, Illinois, but you're just as good Americans as anybody that was. You're a fool. You die for to be listened to him. The bombers will come again in Japanese troops. They're on the way. Sure, but this time we're ready for them. Flashy, here you take this boy home. I'm going to beat up on a dirty Nazi here. Why, you let me go. Let go. Oh, you're a Nazi major, are you? Well, I'm a United States sergeant major. Uh, hey, uh, folks, you heard what he says. The Japs are on the way. Well, you know what that means. None of you people wanted a war, but you're getting it just the same. War's like a sickness. Nobody wants it, but millions of people get it. When you get sick, you send for a doctor. When you get a war, you get a soldier. That's me. I'm giving orders from here on. Get all these women and children out of here. Get them across that their Belgian bridge over the highway. We've got to evacuate him before the Japs get here. All right. Hurry up. Get going. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter for Act Three of Salute to the Marines. And now, here comes Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Libby, you had me scared there for a minute. I was afraid you weren't going to get here. Sorry, Mr. Kennedy. I was almost late. But don't blame me. It's all because of Joan Fontaine. Explain, Libby. Well, I just saw a preview of her latest picture, and it was so fascinating, I sat through it twice. Oh, now I understand, Libby. I'd sit through any picture twice that had Joan in it. Oh, she's lovely in this one, Mr. Kennedy. In spite of the severe hairdo and the prim bonnet she wears in the role of a Victorian governess. Well, who minds a prim bonnet if Joan's charming features are under it? And her lovely complexion. A luxe complexion, you know. Truly, Mr. Kennedy, I've never seen smoother, softer skin than Jones. And especially in the close-ups, you notice what a, a luminous look it has. I know what you mean, Libby. Sort of delicate and flower-like. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. And for that delicate skin of hers, Joan Fontaine needs a real beauty soap. That's why she uses luxe toilet soap. She says she, she uses it every day, too. Never neglects her active lather facials because they're a real beauty aid. Lovely women everywhere say that. They find Lux Toilet Soap a really gentle care. The lather is so rich and creamy. Mm hmm. Screen stars say it's just like smoothing beauty in to use Lux Soap. And I think every woman who tries it will agree. Now, there's a tip right from Hollywood. Nine out of ten screen stars use this fine white soap, you know. So why not discover what daily Lux Toilet Soap care can do for your complexion? See how smooth it makes your skin feel. What new freshness it brings. And remember, it's patriotic not to waste soap. Lux Toilet Soap is hard milled to last 
But you'll find it lasts even longer if you always put it in a soap dish that's dry. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. One of our stars has just come back from an exciting journey. We'll find out about it after the play. Now the curtain rises on the third act of Salute to the Marines, starring Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter with Nora Beery and Key Luke. <laughs> of Balagan is in flames, and ex-Marine Bailey has taken over command. Alone he stands in the rubble-littered streets, directing the evacuation. But now, around the corner, appears a welcome sight. Three Leathernecks, leading a platoon of Filipino soldiers. Platoon, halt! Mosley! Saunders! Hi, yes, Sarge. Where'd you guys come from? Well, we're up the coast a couple of miles on maneuvers. We heard the bombs, we came down the run. Yeah, who's commanding? Lieutenant James. He'll be here in a little while. Flashy, you go meet him? Tell him to put machine guns up on the side of that hill. The same place we worked the last problem. Okay, Sarge. We'll stay here and defend the village from house to house. Tree to tree, rock to rock. Uh-huh, we fight a delaying action, huh? That's right. Okay. Till the Japs get here, we'll keep on evacuating the natives. Wait, you got a radio man? Yeah, we got Joseph's. He can send. All right, you pick up four men and take over that station down the street. Tell headquarters what has happened here and tell them we need help. Right. The Japs get across that Balagan Bridge, they'll overrun the country in a couple of hours. Tell the colonel we'll hold it as best we can until he can send a demolition spot. We've got most of them out, Sergeant. Good. What about Mrs. Bailey, Doc? She's down at the bridge with Helen. They're helping take care of the injured. You better get along down there too, Doc. No. I want a rifle, please. Sometimes it's more important to be a man than a doctor. Okay, we can use men here. Boss, the Japs are landing. Yeah. Fishermen in uniform, huh? Let them come. All right, take your positions, men. Get those machine guns. We'll give those little monkeys a dose of their own surprise. Here they are, Sarge. I make the range about 100 yards. No, no, 85. No elevation. Okay, here they come. Let them have it. That's it. That's it. Look at them little monkeys go down. <laughs> hey, you were right, Sarge. 85 on the nose. <laughs> Keep it going, you men. Hey, Sarge, more Japs are landing. They've got tanks with them. Tanks, huh? Let's see, yeah. Okay, Mosley, better tell your boys to fall back. We'll have to now. They've got those guns right on us. Tell them to fall back and regroup at Lieutenant James' position up on the hill. Fall back, guys. Follow me. <laughs> Sergeant Bailey reporting, sir. Keep down, Sergeant. I'm Lieutenant James. Yes, sir. All the women and children got over the bridge, all right, thanks to you. Me, sir? They tell me you had this evacuation plan two months ago. Oh, I just figured we'd play it kind of safe, that's all. What are your orders, sir? I think you know this position better than I do. You run the show, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The way I see it, those Japs are in a hurry to get across that Balagan Bridge. They'll come up right here and right up the hill. It's the shortest route. And we stay here? Yes, sir. I figure the colonel will have that demolition squad here pretty soon. Then we can fall back across the bridge just before they blow it up. Good, we'll stay. Here they come again. Keep down short first, you guys. Save that ammunition. And they've got those tanks moving now. Sanders! Don't let those tanks get behind us. Take three men and fall back to protect the road. Come on, guys. You three. Take plenty of grenades. You'll need them. Sergeant. Those Filipino boys handle a job like that? Yes, sir. I train those guys. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Hey, Sergeant. Here's the missus. Who? Bill. What? Oh, Bill. Jenny. Jenny, here. Get down quick. What are you doing here? I figured you were across the bridge. I thought there might be someone here who needed help. Where's Helen? She's safe with the others. Here, Bill. I, I brought this for you. What's that? I went back to the house and... My uniform. My dress blues. Oh, gee, Mom. Put the coat on. Yeah. Maybe I'll feel more comfortable again. Hey, hey, you better watch it, Charles. They can spot those blues a mile away. Let them. I want them to. How do I look, Mom? Oh, Bill, I think you look grand. Yeah, that'll hold them for a while. They've fallen back. We ought to feel flattered, Sergeant. They tossed everything they had at us. And from all directions. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Jenny? Fine. But I could use some more bandages. Now, look, Mom... You've done enough here. I'll send a couple of boys with you. You try and make the bridge, huh? They're still wounded here, Bill. Yes, but... As long as they're wounded, they need someone to take care of them. 
Anyway, you can't spare any men. I'm staying, Bill. But look, Bob. Hey, the colonel's signaling to us from the bridge. Yeah, what's he saying? They got the demolition charges set. Any orders? Wait a second. Fall back across the bridge. Yeah, that's a good trick if we can do it. Okay, Mom, here we go. We're getting out of here. What about the wounded? We'll have to carry them. Up you go, boys. Keep down, keep down. Sergeant, they come back of us. They surround us. Well, I guess we're staying here. Bill, isn't that disobedience of orders? You still got a sense of humor, Jenny, huh? Hey, Mosley. Yep. Send a message to the colonel. Tell him we can't accept his invitation due to a previous engagement. There's a Jap plane, Sergeant. Yeah. They've stopped firing down below. I, I guess they're going to let the planes finish us off. There goes the bridge. Well, nobody's going to use that for a long time. That's right. Nobody's going to cross that. Well, it's been a pleasure serving under you, sir. Oh, stop. I don't rate the salute. I think you do. Here he comes. Give it to him. Getting a little lower every time. Nice shooting there, Flashy. Some fight, huh? This better than Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I'm some manager, ain't I, champ? Sure, you got instructions for this round? Sure I have. You Filipino boys are going to pick up them guns and disappear over into those woods. That's the kind of fighting you know best. Come on. What are you waiting for? Get moving. No go. We stay here and fight with you. No, 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 you ain't. No, you're not. You're going to fight all right. Why, you're going to fight the biggest battle of your life. You're all going to win new titles. You know, this ain't just a little skirmish that's going to be over in one afternoon. Them Japs are going to try and climb all over these islands. Killing them off is going to be a full job for all of you from now on. I remember all the things that I've taught you and use them. So long, champ. Okay. Maybe they tried to climb over these islands, but there are going to be a lot of us can climb over them, too. Sure. Well, you just stay in there and keep punching, champ. You hear? Now carry out your orders. Sure, boss. Sure. Watch it! Jenny! Jenny! You okay? I'm, I'm fine. Had a girl. Bill, it's hopeless, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Yes, you do. I know it too, Bill. Bill, I didn't realize all those 30 years while we were living them. They were leading up to just this one moment. I'm proud of you, Bill. Oh, Mom. And I'm proud. So proud of that uniform. So my Mom. I only wish the Marines had a uniform for women, too. Well, maybe they will before the war is over. You know, it's too bad the colonel wasn't here, Mom. He would have enjoyed this. I bet maybe I'd get that decoration, too. of Sergeant Major William Bailey killed in action, it is my privilege to present this highest of all decorations for valor to his next of kin, Sergeant Helen Bailey, United States Marine Corps, Women's Reserve. Sergeant Helen Bailey, receive this in honor of a truly great Marine, your father, with the gratitude and in the name of the Congress of the People of the United States. We won't worry about the future of radio drama as long as we can get troopers like Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter. Thank you, C.B. I'm always happy to get back here. You know, Faye, Wally's career has changed rather drastically since the First World War, which was the last time I had him in a picture. He played heavies then, didn't he? Yeah, I, pretty heavy right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not villainous, Wally. In 1917, you played a German general for me. At one time or another in the last 30 years, I suppose you played just about every type of part pictures could invent. 
Every kind except a leading lady. Faye, I hate to contradict a lady, but in my very first film in 1911, I played a Swedish maid. <laughs> that performance alone set pictures back 20 years. 1911 was a long time ago, Wally. Why, it's even before women had Lux soap for a complexion cure. That's something I wouldn't want to give up. I've used it for years. Uh, many million others say the same thing about Lux soap, Faye. I wonder if you'd tell us something about the trip you've just made to the camps. Well, we played to soldiers, sailors, and marines, mm. Mr. DeMille. But I discovered what entertainment really can mean when we hit one small camp in the mountains where they hadn't even seen a woman in weeks. I've been in the theater since I was four years old. And this is the greatest thrill that's ever been for me. We're leaving for another tour soon. And the best of luck to you, Faye. What's on the fire next week, CB? A romantic and tuneful drama of old San Francisco, Wally. It's the 20th Century Fox musical hit, Hello, Frisco, Hello. And our stars will be Alice Faye and Robert Young. Alice Faye plays an entertainer of the Barbary Coast days. And you'll hear the big song hits that sent everybody out of the theater humming. I'll guarantee next Monday will not be Blue Monday if you'll join us for Hello, Frisco, Hello. Gee, I wish I could sing like Alice Faye. <laughs> Good night, CB. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. A salute to both of you for a salute to the Marines. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents... Alice Fay and Robert Young in Hello, Frisco, Hello. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. T. Luke will soon be seen in the Metro Goldwyn Mayer picture, Andy Hardy's Blonde Trouble. Heard in tonight's play were Louise Arthur, Alex Havier, Charlie Lung, Robert Harris, Paula Winslow, Tommy Cook, Dix Davis. Fred Mackay, Charles Seal, Stanley Farrar, Jack Mather, Ed Emerson, Howard McNear, Roland Drew, Griff Barnett, Tyler McVeigh, and Eddie Marr. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Alice Fay and Robert Young in Hello, Frisco, Hello. Mothers... In spite of food shortages, get the vitamins and minerals your family needs. Get Vim. Vim's give you all the vitamins government experts say are essential, balanced in the formula doctors endorse. All the minerals commonly lacking, too. 